see a pupa tomorrow. Hey folks, David Fine from Keys Moz. Today we are in Broward County. We're like literally in my front yard and you can hear the wonderful sound of urban uh, Broward County traffic. But what we're gonna do today is we are going to show you how to raise some large sulfurs. We have pink spot sulfur caterpillars, uh, Afrisa nellies in on our horse flush mahogany plant. We're gonna show that to you in a minute. And we're gonna show you the best way to raise uh, large sulfurs in South Florida. They're a little tricky because they're a little picky on what they eat and they're, sometimes it's hard to raise them. So uh, we're gonna show you how to do that. Pink spot sulfur is gonna be our test case. So guys, I hope you like the video. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we're gonna show you all about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Guys, stay tuned. Let's see how we do uh, with raising large sulfurs from South Florida. Think about sulfur, guys. How cool. All right, so folks, large sulfurs, there's five species in South Florida. We've got the orange barred sulfur and the uh, cloudless giant sulfur. Those both feed on different species of senna. We use candlestick cassia, uh, cassia alata in, in our backyard. It's the easiest way to get them. Uh, we also have um, the large orange sulfur, which is uh, Phoebus agarithi. They feed on tamarind and cat claw. Um, and that's a whole different bug. But then we've got two Afrisa uh, species, and we have a Afrisa statira, which is very, very common uh, around coin vine, which we have in the backyard. But today, the species that we're gonna focus on is an exotic that recently took up uh, residence in South Florida, the pink spot sulfur, Afrisa uh, nellis. They feed on horse flesh mahogany, and we are gonna show you how to raise them. So let's go over to my mahogany tree and we're gonna find some caterpillars now we'll show you how to do that all right folks so literally it's actually raining right now a little bit drizzly weather so we are literally coming over around to our horse flesh mahogany tree and basically what I'm doing I'm just got like a little piece of uh, cardboard here and we're gonna use that to put our cuttings in and when we find our caterpillars uh, a lot of people that raise butterflies like to raise them inside, you know, they, or they'll they'll get eggs from them and raise them from caterpillar uh, or from the egg in, inside in captivity. But guys, large sulfurs are very, very tricky because they only eat the newest of, of leaves like this. They only eat these new little tiny reddish uh, tendrils uh, or uh, reddish uh, meristems of the plant and they won't eat anything else. So. Uh, and, and they don't like cuttings, so that's the thing, man. If you bring them in on cuttings, you're, they're going to kill them. So look at that. Two big caterpillars right there. And they're eating right there on the new leaves of that plant. Let's see if we can find more. I'll bet we'll find plenty more because this thing is ab absolutely infested with pink spot sulfur. There's another one. Guys, there's, there's a whole bunch of them here on this plant and he's kind of wigging out here on me so look at this guys we've got we've got pink spot sulfur caterpillars literally all over this plant here and so it's a challenge raising large sulfurs guys so what we do is we wait until we see them like this they're they're all over a plant they're starting to feed up but we wait until the caterpillars are nice and big and we're just going to let those caterpillars go all the way through to final instar right out on the plant now sometimes you can run the risk of getting predation and like if a bird were to find this uh plant i'm sure it would, like a cardinal or a mockingbird i'm sure it would have a field day but uh, luckily they didn't but these guys actually go through their life cycle very quickly so i think they have like a a 10 or 11 day larval cycle before they become uh, pupa. So what we're gonna do guys, we're only gonna bring in the largest of the caterpillars. So, all right, so this guy right here is a final instar caterpillar. We'll bring him in 
and raise him the rest of the way through on cuttings because he'll go pre-pupil tomorrow. And that's the best way to go because if you don't, they're just gonna become stunted or they virus and they die and we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at the same time. All right, I, got, I got another little guy, probably a fourth instar larva there as well, but I'll go ahead and put him there. Okay, let's see what else we can find here. So this guy here is for sure a final instar caterpillar. So we're gonna bring him in as well. Now notice how the stems that we're cutting where the caterpillars are, they've already eaten all the baby leaves. So we're gonna need to cut food for them as well. So we've got three caterpillars there. All right, guys, we're gonna see if we can find a few more of the larger caterpillars. There's, I'm gonna see if I can show you the eggs, guys. The eggs are so tiny. These little tiny white cream colored things, those are the eggs. This tree is absolutely covered. Unfortunately, one of the things that large sulfurs do is they eat themselves out of house and home. The caterpillars will eat all of the new growth and literally only the oldest caterpillars will survive and then once all the new growth is gone, they actually start cannibalizing each other and eating each other. So uh, it's kind of one of those unfortunate things. Guys, look at this. On this one stem, literally, there's one, two, three, four caterpillars on that one stem. So what'll happen, guys, this larger caterpillar right here, if he runs out of new growth, he'll turn around and eat his younger siblings. I mean, these guys might already be too big uh, for him to do that with, but the smaller caterpillars, like like this guy right here, see, so check this out. There's a little tiny caterpillar right here, probably third in star. Uh, he'd be toast. His larger siblings would turn and cannibalize and eat them. So you don't want to put too many large sulfur caterpillars in a container because if they if you get lazy and you don't put enough food in there, and you're, they run out of food, they'll start eating each other. So you don't want to overdo it. You just put a couple in a container at a time. So these guys, I think, are all maybe, maybe fourth and final instar. So I'll, I'll take this stem right here. I'll just take this whole thing right there. And now I'll have, I have four caterpillars right in that one stem. So now I've got seven. And I'm already almost at capacity for the container that I'm about to use, and I don't want to overdo it. But as you can see, there are caterpillars, there are younger caterpillars all over this tree. So uh, unfortunately, they are not going to have enough food. Some of these younger ones are not going to have enough food to get all the way through. There, there's a final instar. So we'll go ahead and take him in. And this is actually, he's actually resting on a nice big piece of growth. So we're actually going to take that whole piece like that and that'll be good good food for him. One of the things whenever you're cutting taking cuttings guys, you always got to be very very careful for predators. You can see the spiders. If you accidentally bring spiders like this in, uh, they will make short work of your caterpillars. So you got to make sure that spiders are all gone. Go ahead and snip this off. All right, so I think I've gotten all the big final instar caterpillars that I can see. And like I said, you don't want to bring in too many because, and you don't want to bring them in too early because they just, they just won't live. You won't be able to get them through. Here's a nice big stem with some nice fresh growth. So I'll, I'll cut that for food for my container. there and that's a nice stem with all these little little red new growth new leaves there it's a good stem to cut cut that oh look at this guy guys that is a full-grown caterpillar right there guys that guy right there he's final instar
he'll be a pupa tomorrow. So I'm gonna cut this stem. That should do it. So I'm gonna take these inside and we'll start setting up our caterpillars in a container. Okay, folks, so we have our uh, cuttings with all of our caterpillars on it. And what I'm gonna show you is how I set up my container when we're raising caterpillars. Now, this is just a plastic uh, container here. And what I'm, I'll show you how I set it up. Um, inside, I, I just fold a little you know, paper towel, put it on the bottom that it's easy to clean it out. Um, we're gonna have to clean it out every day. And then I put a little cup in here and inside the cup I've got five little uh, water picks and they are all full of water. And what, what we do with those very simply, let's see, okay. And what we do with these five water picks is very simply we take our new growth and we stick it in there. Okay, now we've got our new growth stuck in our water pick. And what I do is I just put it right in this cup and put it in here. All right, so we're gonna put these in as well. And let's see how this works. Okay. Very good. And you can even put, well, that's a big one. I'll leave that one separate. I'll put him in just like that. Okay. And then this big stem here I'll put in. Okay. Just like that. And then there's two stems here. I'll put them in as well. Okay. Our container is ready to go. So now we've got uh, four water picks full of fresh new growth from our host plant, from our larval host plant. And you can see all the nice new growth on this plant. So it's really uh, the choicest of succulent uh, new growth for them. Now what we're left with is our caterpillars. And so like this stem right here doesn't have a whole lot of uh, growth on it. So I'm not going to worry about putting it in a water pick, but um, we, we don't like to do is we don't like to handle our caterpillars very much. So what we'll do is we'll just take a snip like this. We'll snip that off and there's two caterpillars there and we'll just rest them on top of the stem like that. So we don't actually ever have to handle the caterpillar because if you handle them, they start to get bruised, they get to, they get virused, uh, they get stressed and they don't, they don't like that too much. So this one actually has some growth. So I'll actually put that in a water pick. Put that in a water pick right here. And you can see there's a nice big juicy, juicy caterpillar right there. And uh, he is going to be pupating here probably tomorrow. In fact, he might even be pre-pupal already. The rest of my caterpillars, I've got several of them here. Uh, all I'm gonna do with them is I'm just gonna rest these twigs right on top of the rest of this growth. And voila, I close my lid. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to change out this paper towel every single day and you have to pay attention to see how much the container is sweating. So if it starts to be too much condensation, sometimes if you put too much biomass mm -hmm. inside the container, it can start to sweat. And if it gets too moist, uh, the caterpillars can get sick that way. So you wanna make sure that you do a little moisture control. But uh, guys, tomorrow we'll check back and we'll see how these caterpillars are doing. Okay guys, it's been about 26 hours since we went out and found our caterpillars. And so what we're gonna do now, we're going to show you guys just how to care for the container. And we're gonna go into the container. And as you can see, there is some condensation on the side of the container there. And you can kind of see how wet it is. And that's actually not good. See, there's a little bit too much moisture. So we gotta make sure that we dry that out. And if you look in here, 
you can see that the caterpillars have really begun to do a number on the on the biomass in that containers all right so now what we're going to do is before we go taking this out i'm going to put some paper towel down so that we take we're going to take the entire this entire thing out now guys what i'm going to show you is just how much da damage those caterpillars will do in uh, 26, 27 hours. This is all, remember you, this, this paper towel was very clean and new when we put it in yesterday. So all this is basically in the last 24 hours. So that's a lot of poo. So remember, caterpillars eat seven times their own body weight in food every day. So that all that extra <laughs> has got to go somewhere. So we're just wiping that in. Now, we've got to be careful that we don't wipe in caterpillar that is actually pre-pupil. This caterpillar, you can see that yellow line down the side. He's actually making his pupa very, very soon. So probably by tomorrow morning, uh, he's gonna be hanging in the J position. He's gonna be making his pupa. So he's already spun his silk pad right here. And so we can't disturb him or he's not gonna form a successful pupa. So we gotta leave him alone. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one of these dry paper towels and I'm just gonna wipe some of the sides of the container just to get some more of that moisture out and put that in the garbage, okay? All right, now I've got a nice brand new lining that i'm going to do down there paper towel so now we're going to take a look and see how our caterpillars are doing now as we can see there is one here that's already in what we're calling the j position so this is a j position caterpillar right here and as you can see it, it's hanging from that silk pad on the back end and it hangs kind of and it curves up like a, a in the shape of a J. That's why they call it the J position. Let's see if I can show you guys the girdle. So now right here, you can see there's this little tiny piece of silk, and it's like a it's like a girdle, it's like a lasso, and it lassos around the side of the caterpillar, and that's what the caterpillar uses to hold itself in place while it's in the pupa. And of course. The back end back here is attached to its silk pad. Now, when they're in the J position, they are extremely vulnerable and fragile. So you really got to be careful. You can't disturb them. You definitely cannot handle them or they will die. So we got to be super, super careful. Now, looking on this thing, there's not a whole lot of leaves left. Um, we have a number of caterpillars that are doing, doing a number on this stuff here. Uh, and they're big boys, you know, so these guys are getting ready to pupate here. Probably, probably by, by tomorrow, we're going to have a lot more things in the J position. But you can see all these great big caterpillars here. And they are hungry, hungry dudes. So, pretty simple. Uh, we cl cleaned out the, the bottom lining of the container. We wiped off some of the sweat or the condensation that's on the side. And we're just going to go ahead and put this back in nice and gently so that our J position caterpillar does not get damaged. Super gentle. And now what I went and did is I went and picked some new growth. So this is all brand new growth. And I actually found a couple more great big final instar caterpillars out on the plant. And I'll just go ahead and add them to our little, our little collection here. <laughs> so got some nice stems, some nice new growth. And we are going to just add them right in. And again, the trick is not to put too much growth in because if there's too much, then it, the container gets too wet and your caterpillars will virus and they'll die and that's not good. We've got our new biomass that we've put into our container. Now we are going to close them up and let them chew on that new growth for the next day. And we'll check back uh, in 24 more hours and we'll remove some of those J position caterpillars 
so that they don't get eaten by their siblings. Let's check back tomorrow. Hey folks, because of all the incredible information that's going into this video, a tutorial on how to raise large sulfurs in South Florida, I figured, guys, we're gonna split this up into two videos. This time we learned about you know, raising sulfurs out on the plants, on the living plant, it's so much better for a lot of these species. Um, guys, we are going to have a virus problem, so I'm gonna show you that in the next video. But we do get some through, and it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Uh, we'd love for you to join our YouTube family, uh, Keys Mod family, and keysmods.com. We got all kinds of information there for you. So guys, uh, stay tuned to the next video. Don't forget to log in and check it out next week, and we'll finish up this series. Till then, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida.